Hello and welcome to Art Block, the show where we talk about art and how it's made. I'm your host, Spirit, and today we have a Q&A. Also, ladies and gents, please give a very warm welcome to my friend Springheart, who will be reading off the questions for you today. Make sure to subscribe to her and say hello, Spring. Hello, everyone. It's Springheart the Llama, your drama-free llama, here to read some questions and butcher some names for that super awesome blue deer in this owl-woo-woo free zone. Prepare for the butchering of names. For Remius Gigantuous, any tips on drawing hands? I struggle with hands. My general rule of thumb is that whenever you struggle with something, you should practice and do studies on it. Try to find a basic underlying structure that will help you build what you are trying to draw. Overall, when you struggle with anything, I think it's best to slowly chip away at it rather than just avoiding it. You'd be surprised how much you can improve if you open up to learning something new. Cool Team Abel asks, Is there any advice for keeping smooth and consistent line work? Also, any tips on doing ink work like some artists do for Inktober? My main recommendation when it comes to doing smooth line work is to have a program like Fire Alpaca or Paint Tool Sci that has brush stabilizers. I've covered line work in more detail in episode 45, so feel free to watch that if you haven't already. In terms of doing ink work for Inktober, working with ink is just a matter of practice, though I would recommend maybe investing in a proper sketchbook over printer paper. Shadow Dusk X asks, Do you have any advice for beginning artists? What does it take to be an artist? My advice for beginning artists is to practice and continue looking for improvement in everything you do. Don't allow yourself to say, Okay, this is good enough as it is, I don't have any further to go. A lot of artists will generally work really hard, and as we're working, we'll start to see problems and how we can improve. Instead of throwing our current work away, we usually finish it and take away anything that we've learned from the piece to improve for the future. Also, this should go without saying, but don't hold yourself to too high a bar. Shoot for the stars, yes, but don't expect to make it there on your first day. You gotta get to the moon first. Trust Me Studios asks, can I request something? I assume you're referring to artwork, and for that I say no. I already have a pretty busy schedule working on videos, doing art as my job, and working on my own projects. I rarely ever do art for free, and the times that I do are usually free art raffles hosted on Twitter or gift art for friends. The reason why I charge for art is that it's not only my job, but I feel I have practiced enough in the craft where I deserve compensation for my time. After all, to quote a certain joker, if you're good at something, never do it for free. Artistic Passion asks, For animators that have no money, what programs for animation and art are good quality and free? I covered some free art programs way back in episode 4 of the series. If none of the ones in the video suit your fancy, a lot of people also suggested Metabang. Maybe it's time to do a redux of that video. Creativia Artly asks, What's the most complicated mythical creature you've ever drawn? When did you start drawing Anthros? I know the answer to this one before even reading the, the answer. It's a dragon. You've seen her dragons? Damn, they are very detailed dragons. As for drawing anthros, I've been drawing anthros since I started drawing, but I didn't really get good at them until maybe 2017. As I've practiced more with human anatomy, I found they're a lot easier to draw. Artie Plays the Artist asks, Are art books helpful for character design? If so, do you recommend any? I found studying other people's concept art for characters can be really helpful to understanding the process of designing and improving your characters. However, I don't really know any particular art books at the moment. CS Joe the Dragon asks, What color do you usually shade in? And how do you blend the shade? For general art that doesn't have any particular light source color, I usually shade in a dark purple with the multiply setting. The thing to keep in mind with shading is that your shadows will reflect off the light source. It's why snow that's being shaded by trees has a bluish tint to the shadow, because the main light that's reflecting off the snow is from the sky rather than the sun. I probably ought to do a video on shading. Might be a good thing to talk about. Tinker Girl asks, How long do normal drawings take you, i.e. flat color or maybe quickly shaded? The time it takes for me to finish a drawing is dependent on a few factors. The first thing is the complexity of the character, then how difficult the pose and angle is to be drawn. The actual coloring part doesn't take too long. The most time-consuming part of the whole process is actually doing line work, with the second pass sketching being a close runner-up. If we're talking a normal flat-colored piece, probably around 2-4 to four hours depending on how complex the character is. 
Narkissa03 asks, what is your favorite and least favorite thing to draw? Favorite thing to draw is animals and animal hybrids, though I do have a soft spot for humans. Least favorite thing is backgrounds with difficult or busy perspectives. Ender the Phantom asks, How close can two pieces of art be to not be considered as copying or getting copyrighted? I don't think there's any specific litmus test to determine whether something is actually fully copied. In general, I would try to stray away from having too many similarities, but accidents can happen. In regards to copyright law, generally, independent creators won't sue you for a character unless you've blatantly stolen them or you are using their design for branding. For example, if you took Spirit and used her for your own project without my written permission, then you'd be in the line of fire for legal trouble. However, if you wanted to make a character inspired by her, say, another blue deer who has antlers but maybe has different hair and different markings, then I'd be okay with it. In general, artists generally won't sue over small things like original characters. Yes, it sucks when people steal characters, but especially for freelance artists, we don't really have the time or money to deal with it. That's not to say it's an invitation to steal our work, though. Make your own dang characters. Crowley Paws asks, have you tried the left hand, right hand challenge? I haven't, at least not in recent memory. I used to be decent with using my left hand and right hand equally, but writing and drawing are something that I only really do with my right hand. Midnight Fury asks, what is the best price for charging for adoptables? See my video on adoptables for more information on that front. Bubbles08 asks, what is your favorite traditional medium, if any? I spend most of my time doing digital art, but if there's one medium I really like is Copic markers. Markers I found are vibrant and easy to control, as well as straightforward to use once you've practiced with them. Bismol the Dog asks, what is easier to use, granite or charcoal? I personally prefer vine charcoal since it's nice and soft and more easily workable, though graphite tends to be a bit more accurate. Sammy Kuz asks, any tips for young artists trying to balance a ton of schoolwork and have enough time to make art? I've often found that a lot of my time spent doing art was during study halls, lunch breaks, and what little time I had at home. I did a lot of extracurricular stuff like marching band and theater, so I spent a lot of my downtime sketching, with a lot of art being done on the weekends. Overall, I would say you should prioritize your schoolwork and save art for when you have free time. Art should be considered a reward. Finish all your homework, then relish in creativity. Tio Vela asks, what has been your biggest obstacle in your creative process in both writing and drawing? I think it would probably be the fear that I'm doing something incorrectly and I'm simply not aware of it. I'll usually realize problems midway through drawing, but in cases like my writing books, there's only so much I can do myself. It's why I've been really eager to get completed drafts in front of an editor so I can get them published because the sooner I get them published, the sooner I can start chipping away at other stuff. As much as I love my older works, there are certain elements which I feel I've grown in since I've worked on them, but it would be far too time consuming or expensive to redo them. So I just want to get the best version I can out of the current thing that I have, if that makes sense. Basically boil it down to a desire to improve conflicting with dealing with stuff out of my control. Adrian Moreno asks, has anyone ever discouraged you from doing art? And if so, how did you deal with it? Yes, I have dealt with it quite a few times. I've gotten it from my parents, my art teachers, friends, etc. I think the biggest discouraging moment was my rejection letter from Ringling, which you can find out more about in episode 40, wink wink. The important thing to remember when it comes to discouraging words is that, at least with parents, it usually comes out of a feeling of concern rather than malice. The starving artist is a real thing, and though it's not as prominent as some may think it to be, success in the freelance world takes a lot of hard work and not everyone is successful. Either way, just be sure to keep chugging along and you'll find success eventually. Z Blade asks, what got you first interested in MLP? And going along with that, who was your favorite character in the show? <laughs> Funny story, actually. I was babysitting a couple of kids from my church one day and we decided to watch some TV. I turned on Netflix and the girls ended up picking up My Little Pony. Little did I know that I would get sucked into the world of MLP. As for favorite character in the show, Dragonlord Ember. Onyx Badger asks, any mythical creatures you're fond of? Also, do you read any webcomics? If so, any you recommend? 
Aside from demons and dragons, I've always had a fascination with werewolves. As for webcomics, I haven't really read any of late. Prince Thunderspark asks, If you were to make an Alicorn OC, what would it be like? I personally am of the belief that Alicorns and MLP should represent different aspects aside from love and friendship. Elemental things like fire, water, or nature would probably be really cool. I think if I was going to make a character to fit within a narrative, she probably would be an Alicorn of fire. Maybe have her be lava-based, teach a lesson on how destruction can lead to new life, just like volcanoes in real life. Pixpanda asks, How long have you been a furry, and what stuff inspired you to join the fandom? I've been a furry since 2016. I've always liked the aesthetic of Anthros, but I could never put a meaning to them until I saw Zootopia in 2016. Then by chance, I got recommended a Picari Roo video, and it just spiraled down from there. And just because I know people are going to get on my butt about it, no, I don't really participate in the adult side of the fandom. Soundwaves Productions asks, If you were to make a show, what would it be about, and where would you air it? I've actually had an idea for a TV show for a while. It's called 2000 Degrees and would be an action superhero drama with an anime-esque style. Or at least with the way I'd want it to look and feel. For now, my main focus is going to be on Beta 9 since that's something I can more conceivably do, which you should go totally watch, by the way. Ace Minster asks, Have you watched anime? If yes, what is your favorite? Yes, I have actually watched some anime, though just enough to count on my fingers. I would say my favorite as of now is a tie between One Punch Man and Inuyasha. Saitama's plight in One Punch Man is something I really relate to with a whole not feeling challenged or finding less satisfaction in your work. The editor asks, What would you say that pros and cons of being in the furry slash brony fandom, and how does it influence your work to be the best at what you do? Hello, editor. Come at me. <laughs> and my heritage. Well, if I'm honest, I never try to be the best at anything. I always strive to become better, but just as we become better than someone, there will always be someone better than us. I would say since the show is over for MLP that it might be wise to move on to greener pastures. The recent Gen 4.5 doesn't look to have too much to talk about, and general fandom burnout has led MLP to be less viable for content creation. Best to branch out and broaden your horizons. As for the furry fandom, I would say the biggest disadvantage to being in the fandom is that it's a little crazy at times. Admittedly, I sit kind of on the sidelines, I'm only really here for the art and fursuits. In general, I've noticed as I get older, I tend to be less active in fandoms, and I'm more of a silent observer. Rocky Harmony asks, What got you into fursuiting? Also, why is blue the best color? I got into fursuiting sometime back in mid-2016 thanks to discovering YouTubers like Bakari Ru and Majira Strawberry. I didn't actually get my fursuit until summer of 2018 due to needing to save up and whatnot. But I honestly really enjoy it and I found that any opportunity I get to wear my suit is really fun and worthwhile. As for why blue is the best color, well you just might have to ask the blue Ru about that my friend. Nielsen Demi Fur asks, what cartoons have you watched that you think should get more recognition? I've mentioned it a few times before, but there was an animated series called Silverwing based off of a book of the same name. I've always had a fascination with bats, and that series really scratched my itch to see them in animation. T3G the Virus Cat asks, How did you come up with your channel name? My channel name has a similar origin to how I came up with Spirit as a concept. My channel and name need a rebranding along with my DA and other social medias. One random night I was sitting at my desk and suddenly thought of the name Spirit. The name Spirit has a very mysterious and almost tribal feeling to it, something I thought would be fitting of a deer. The production's part was out of a desire to make my work seem a bit more professional, which was what I was shooting for. Initially I was going to call it Spirit Studios to add a bit of alliteration, but I googled it and Spirit Studios was already taken at the time. So Spirit Productions it was. Wolf EXE asks, Will you be trying to interview other forms of creators in the future? From people who do similar shows to art block, to story and webcomic creators? I will admit I have been looking for more guest stars to come on the show, but the future of the series is a bit unknown. If you guys have any creators you'd like to see on the show, please do tell me in the comments, but ultimately just be aware that it's not a guarantee. 
Latroya Chu asks, Why did you join YouTube? Any reason or just out of passion? All right, so this is really where my age starts to show. I joined YouTube back in the big Let's Play craze around the early 2010s, and since then my interests have shifted dramatically. YouTube is a very different platform from back in the day, so making videos is now a whole different ballgame. It's a lot more business oriented nowadays, and with the current algorithm, it honestly kind of sucks. I'd really prefer to have a platform where my subscribers actually get their content sent to them so I can create videos without having to constantly worry if it does well. So basically, it's just out of passion for the chance of helping other people. Little Miss Sky Carson asks, where do you see yourself in five years? Ah uh, yes, the classic business question. If YouTube keeps up its current decline, I'll probably pack up and migrate to a different platform if there is one. Either that or I'll just retire from making videos if it doesn't seem worth the effort. After that, I'll probably have graduated with my animation degree, which will mean I'll hopefully be working on either other people's shows or pitching my own series to networks. I have been considering making my brand an official business with a proper studio and hiring other artists to work with me. Where I am now, there's a lot of changes and opportunity down the way, so it's really hard to say where I'll exactly be in 2024. RestyHelm93 asks, Do you plan on doing a video about DeviantArt? What are your thoughts on DeviantArt Eclipse? I actually did a review of DeviantArt Eclipse back in episode 39. If you're talking about things like how to grow on DeviantArt, I've thought about doing a video on that, but I might have to do some further research. All I know is create art and post them to a bunch of groups along with using hashtags. Hmm. Maybe I can see about contacting a staff member, maybe see if they'd be willing to do an interview. Could be good to get some insight, teach people how to grow to become successful. Screezy Syrup asks, Do you animate? If so, when will you post animation? Or do you have a channel for that? I don't currently do a whole lot of animation. I am studying it, though I don't really have the time or means to create it frequently. I have thought about doing animation memes, or at least an episode on them. The newest animation I've made as of scripting this video is the Sticky Bee map, but in general all video content goes up on this channel. Yugi Brony asks, have you thought about doing animations as commissions? I have considered doing them, the one problem is that animation is pretty varied in complexity and can take a wide variety of time. Ultimately what it comes down to is the pricing, since I'm not really practicing animation, I don't have a proper feel for it. I think at most what I'd offer is maybe a little animation loops. Jessica Jones asks, can you do a video tutorial on how to draw? I was divided on putting this in the art section, but here we go. I can't make a video on how to draw because drawing is something a majority of people can do. I can make a tutorial on how to draw certain things or mistakes to avoid in drawing, but ultimately the process of learning how to draw is based off of observation and practice. You are here on your own journey and sometimes it's just something you have to seek out yourself. Tasha Jorgensen asks, how do you make your OC move to what you're saying? The way I make my character talk is by making a puppet rig, which I'll explain more in the future. In terms of how I get her to match up with my words, I manually edit each individual picture to sync up in Premiere. The Little Bounce is a simple keyframe feature that I add to each picture in Premiere. If you all are interested in it, I may make an editing tutorial at some point, though considering how well the last video on YouTube did in its debut, I'm hesitant to make videos pertaining to editing or video production. Kelly Jamson asks, How did you come up with Artblock as a series, and what inspired you to make it? So let's rewind way back to September of 2015. A little YouTube series called Scribble Kibble debuted. At the time, I was still focused on Ponyworks, but over time I realized I was going to need something a little bit more universal for when the pony bandwagon eventually came to an end. Fast forward a bit to February of 2017, and I produced my first episode of Artblog. The views at the time were rather mediocre, but over time I realized just how lucrative having my own IP was over doing something fair use related. Unlike Scribble Kibble, Artblog is a little bit more tutorial and discussion than style replication or breaking down other media. I've done it on occasion, but I've found my audience doesn't really take well to those types of videos, not to mention YouTube's copyright system. Kabang Kabang asks, do you plan on making any other series outside of Art Block? It's called Beta 9! <laughs> I have been considering that for a while. I haven't gotten much in mind as of late. I think Art Block will probably get about 50 episodes out of it, and at the rate we're going, we're probably going to be coming to a close soon.
Shirkhelm Stevens asks, Do you enjoy Smash Bros. Ultimate? For what it's worth, I did enjoy Smash Bros. Ultimate, but I haven't finished it. Mostly just because I keep getting stuck on some of the levels. I think Brawl's story and format were a little bit more to my taste. Silver Star Strike asks, Why did you choose a deer for your fursona? I'd be interested in seeing why you chose that species. I can't exactly remember why I chose a deer, since I came up with the idea of Spirit way back in 2015. At the time, I was pretty strongly rooted in the Brony Phantom, and I felt that having a deer OC would be a bit more unique than a pony OC. If I'm truly honest, I think that Spirit is far more of a brand mascot than a fursona. She does have some elements of me as a person, but overall she's much more of a face of my brand than anything. Leah the Devil asks, How old are you, and who is your favorite YouTuber? I personally like to keep my personal life private, so for the time being, I'm just going to keep my age anonymous. I am an adult, but beyond that, I won't say much. As for favorite YouTubers, I don't really have a favorite per se. One I've come to really like lately is Theremin Trees, who does a lot of discussions on religion and psychology. Lazy Sketchies asks, How did you choose your fursona color scheme? The bright blue with the blonde hair has always been a staple of mine ever since I started art. Now the scheme has vastly improved, but the general mentality I wanted was an OC that reflected me and had a bit of pop to her, so I gave her a blue coat and blonde hair to reflect myself in real life. The one thing that doesn't match her to me in real life is the fact that Spirit has turquoise eyes. I was originally going to give her blue eyes like myself, but the turquoise really helps her eyes pop more and make the expressions more readable. The pink on her nose and ears also helps draw the eye to the face, so that's why that's there. AJ Pony asks, what is your favorite slash least favorite fruit and sweet to eat? Never been a fan of fruit. Only fruit I really tolerate is apples and maybe grapes. As for sweets, I really like stuff like Starburst and Jawbreakers. Least favorite thing is anything with caramel. Endercraft asks, are you in any other fandoms other than the furry and brony fandoms? I'm not really active in fandoms anymore. I've found they can sometimes cause more stress than it's worth. In the realms of what I'm interested in, Halo, Fallout, Devilman, Splatoon, and The Legend of Zelda. I did jump on board the 101 Dalmatian Street fandom thanks to a certain red fox, but it's nowhere near the level of involvement as others. Thundernote asks, what is your favorite and least favorite cookie? Favorite is a tie between Chocolate Chunk and Peanut Butter Blossom, though shortbread is definitely up there. Least favorite thing would probably be anything with raisins, fruit, or nuts. Hybrid Catbird asks, Do you have any other characters besides Spirit? I do, actually, though most of them are narrative-based. I think the last I counted, I have about 25 named characters, though aside from Spirit, Tirps, Soul, and Buttercream, most of them have all existed within the realm of the story for a larger project. Sophia N asks, What is your zodiac sign? I actually had to look this up, but apparently I'm a Pisces. Lucky Winter asks, cat or dog? Both? Both. Both is good. I don't like making no accounts for a reason asks, what should you do if you realize you have too many characters with the same traits? I have run into this problem a couple of times before. Between different projects, I've noticed some characters will have similar or sometimes no personality. Maybe because they're minor characters who spend little time on screen or whatnot. If you're working with one project and feel that some of the characters are a little too similar, maybe consider doing some quick character studies. Phoenix Starman asks, What would happen if your character Kari met my OC? Honestly, I don't know. Everyone's OC is different. Different worlds, different backstories, different cultures. I think that kind of stuff is really up to your interpretation of the character. Pineapple Brat asks, What's your favorite candy bar? Ritter Sport Alpen Milk, though personally I prefer baked goods like cookies over just eating candy. Beanish asks, what music do you listen to? Oh boy, I listen to a lot of stuff. In terms of normal music, a lot of hard rock and punk rock, stuff like Green Day, ACDC, Joan Jett, and stuff. I also like to listen to a lot of game OSTs, been listening to a quite a bit of Halo 2's OST as of late. If you're like me and really like mashups or some dumb meme music, then Neil Cicciarega also has some pretty great stuff. I think if I were to recommend some of my favorites, it would be Time and Annoyed Grunt from Mouth Moods. Kyle Bachman asks, What made you want to become an artist? Ah yes, one of my most frequently asked questions. I became an artist because I had stories I wanted to tell. 
I saw other people making characters and settings and drawing them, and I realized that was something that I wanted to do too. Every artist has different reasons as to why they started, but that reason changes as we grow. Regardless of the reason, I feel all artists have the right to express themselves and create. So why do you create? Whew, that was a long one. If you guys liked what you saw and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. It supports me and is practically free. Also be sure to subscribe to Springheart, she was super nice in helping me with this episode. Link to her page is in the description below. A big thanks to my patrons, especially Mr. Eden for his generosity. If you would like to join them, the link to my Patreon page is in the description below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, I'm Spirit, and I'll see you next time.